Hello! In today's video we're going to be talking about the Explore Scientific AR-127 telescope. This refractor is a very popular refractor and it's an extremely good refractor for its money. For just under $500 it is an f6.5 127 millimeter uh, refractor. It has pretty good optics and I really enjoy taking it out at night and, and doing some observing. There are good points and bad points to these, and if you've read my review, you already know what some of them are. The first problem is, although it has a dual speed Crayford focuser, the focuser lacks a whole lot of things that other focusers in this class have. For example, it has no markings, so it's very difficult to put it back exactly like it was, and that can really be a problem if you tend to do some astrophotography through it. Believe it or not, this scope can actually do some astrophotography uh, reasonably. It's nowhere near as good as the corrected doublet I use for most of my astrophotography, but it can do some, and it's a lot of fun doing wider star clusters and stuff like that. But the problem is, even though this is reasonably smooth, there's just no way to know where you are and where you're going. Now that becomes very important to me in the middle of the dark. Uh, when you're doing visual, not so much because you can just ream it in and out, in and out until you get it. It comes with a very nice dielectric uh, diagonal with a carbon fiber pattern on it. I'm not really sure what's up with the carbon fiber pattern, but that's okay. It looks pretty good. It also comes with a 2 to 1 inch adapter for your eyepieces. Most of mine are 2 inch these days, so that's really not an issue either. Now, one of the things I really like about this telescope, other than the fact that for $500 it has very good optics for that price, is the handle. When I need to take this thing on and off of a mount, my other telescope is a whole lot more complex than that. This is nice. You can just take it, slide it into where it needs to be with one hand, and then tighten it down. And it works quite well. The handle can also be used to mount other things on top of it because it has a slot in the top. This slot just happens to be the perfect size to fit a bolt through to uh, screw into the bottom of a camera. Now, the cradle that this sits in uses two screws that are hand tightened on the other side. This is great if you want to adjust where the telescope sits in this cradle. It's also good for taking it apart to clean it. Now one of the things I do not like about this telescope is the finder scope that comes with it. When I tend to do uh, visual with a telescope like this, I will point it at the target that I'm looking at and then I will look straight up here through my red dot finder and get it where I want it. To me that's very fast and very easy. For some telescopes, you know, such as a Dobsonian, that's a lot more difficult because you'd be literally on the ground. But a red dot on a refractor just cannot be beat. Now the problem with that is these people don't use a standard shoe for their accessories. So you can't just go get a red dot finder and slap it in there. You also can't get a red dot finder from them. You also can't replace the shoe. And the reason is the shoe is actually screwed in through uh, the inside of the, the telescope tube. So you have to disassemble a whole lot of this to, to get it out. Don't try that because these little screws aren't screws, they're bolts. So when you loosen this, the nut falls off inside. They have a special set of tools that go in through here and hold that nut while they tighten it up. Don't know why. So in order to get this with a standard accessory shoe like this, you know, for example, this is an Orion Easy Finder Deluxe. It's my favorite red dot finder. I have these on both of my refractors, just can't live without it. So to get this shoe so that I can slide this finder into it took an act of Congress. It took repeated phone calls and had to scream, holler, and go up the food chain until I finally got somebody who said, oh yeah, we've got a whole shop designed for nothing but that. For whatever reason, the salesman didn't understand. But finally I did get it done. I had to send the telescope back, get that fixed, and then they sent it back to me. One really nice thing is I didn't actually get charged for it because I had such a hard time getting that worked out. 
I did get charged for the actual finder, uh, which I bought from Orion, and of course the base. The base I, I got, I think I bought it from Explorer Scientific. It was very reasonably priced. It's not a big deal. So, for a nice little 127 millimeter, doesn't weigh a whole lot, that gives pretty good views for visual stuff, it's not a bad deal. Would I buy one again? I've enjoyed the views that I've gotten, but considering the pain I went through with their customer service, I would absolutely look somewhere else first. But if I couldn't find anything else in this price range with this quality of optics, I would probably go with it. So that's about it. If you decide to buy one, please use the link below. If you've got any questions, leave me a comment or drop me a line using the contact form on the website. And that's all I've got. Have a good day.